Yes, right. Also in the description. So for the, for the description method, for this, we we describe the elements of that set. So rather than list, as we had under the enumeration method, all we do is we describe. So for the similar set A, where we said it will set of audience between 10 and 20. If we are describing, we say that A is odd integers between 10 and 20. But we could also say that A is X, given that X is an odd integer, and that X is either greater than or equal to 10, or less than or equal to 20. So we can do this. Now, what is that? The difference between these two methods. For the enumeration method, we have to list. Now we can have cases where it is impossible or difficult to list all the elements of the set. So, for example, say that we have a set B, which is called Okay, so for this scenario, it is not possible to list the elements. But in this case, what is it? any type of number between 10 and 20, so including fractions and what are you? So if you have this type of uh, situation where it is not practically to list all the elements, then we say it's an infinite set. And it will not be possible to use the enumeration method where we list all the elements. And so in this case, it will be better or more practicable to use the description method. And so in this case, it's a set where we have X given that. Okay, so like we said, if it's possible to list all the elements of the set, we have a finite set. But in the situation, so like I said, our set A is finite, where we can list all the elements. But where we set B, it has an infinite number of elements. So we call that an infinite set. And then if we want to describe the elements of any set, that is a member of any set, we use the what we call the epsilon sign. This is uh, this thing that looks like an E, like a capital E here. So we use it to say that something is an element of a set. So for example, if I have a set A, where A has where A comprises 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19. Okay, so in this case, 11 is an element of our set A. And so we use this. Is also an element of set A, and then we use that symbol to show that 13 is an element of set A. 15 is an element of set A. 17 is an element of set A, and also 19 is an element of set A. And then for those cases where they are not elements of they said we use this our uh, epsilon and then we'll spike it over. So, like we have under there, 12 is not an element of set A. And also 14 is not an element of set A. 
Okay. So well, that's that with uh, to the challenges it and also operations on sets. So we take for example three four seven eight nine. We have a set B given as two four five six seven eight eleven. Then we have our set C, which is two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if we observe, can be reduced or instead of inside set B, it is also inside A. Where it has numbers, I included both in C and B. Now, it's by this, okay? And so, in that case, A is equal to B. And so, I will say A intersection B. So A intersect B. B is X is an element of A and X is an element of B. So by intersect, we are saying that anything that is in A and that is also in B. Okay. Now if we look at another case where we have a set D, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So for our set D, we have a case where the elements, all the elements of set A are included. At the same time, all the elements of set B are included. In this case, we say that we have a union of A and B. So we depict A union B. And we use uh, this uh, thing like a like uh, um, like a U, it's not a U, but it's on B. And so in this case, uh, A union B is our X, given uh, that our X is an element of A, or X is an element of B. So note the difference, if it's intersect, it is that X is an element of A and, X is an element of B. Whereas if it's union, it is that X is an element of A or X is an element of B. Okay, so uh, we've already discussed the, um, the epsilon sign. So any every element of... Uh, okay, so if we look at Set A, A is one, two, three, four. And set B is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we see in this case that every element of set A is also an element of set B. But not every element of set B is an element of set A. So basically, set A is subsumed within set B, okay? So in this case, we say that A is a subset of B. And we use this, uh, we use this symbol that looks like a C. It was not a C, but it looks like a C to denote the fact that A is a subset of B. And then conversely, because A is subsumed within B, so B is a sort of larger or bigger than A, while we say that A is a subset of B, then conversely, we say that B is a superset of A. So B contains A, whereas for A is contained B. Okay? And if you have a where Everything in A 
is also in B. And so every element of A is also an element of B. And let's say we have identical sets. So in that case, A is equal to B. And 